I'm Steve Marshall, pastor and artist, and I'm excited to share with you my Ministry of Art Evangelism, a series of illustrated sermons on the Christian faith. This video is titled, The Light of the World. I hope you enjoy it and will share it with others. The Bible is the story of God's revealing Himself to His creation. That divine revelation all begins in the Old Testament book of Genesis, where it says, In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. In the beginning there was darkness. That's how it is for each of us. In the beginning, darkness. Our journey into the light begins at birth and continues for a lifetime. In the meantime, we struggle in the darkness. We struggle with the darkness of sin. Jesus pointed out that we love the darkness more than the light because we want to sin in darkness. We stay away from the light because we do not want our sins exposed and punished. That is the darkness of sin, a darkness that surrounds us, a darkness that pervades our world and our lives. There is also the darkness of ignorance, ignorance of God and ignoring of God's will and ignorance of the truth that will set us free. In the beginning there was darkness and God's Spirit swept across the waters. Scholars have pointed out that when God began the creative process, it was not a creation out of nothing, but rather it was bringing order out of chaos. Before creation, there was a formless void. In Hebrew, it's called tohu wabohu, which means an unordered chaos, an unending storm of violent wind and dark waters conditions under which no life could possibly survive. We also struggle in the waters of chaos, the tohu wabohu. We've all experienced that moment in our ordered lives when chaos has broken through. That phone call in the middle of the night summoning you to the hospital. That instant when some drunk driver runs a red light and plows into the side of your car that time when the doctor comes in to tell you that, yes, you do have cancer. It is that moment when the rug is pulled out from under you, your world is turned upside down and inside out, and you feel yourself sinking into a formless void of dark waters and raging winds, your life at an end, your hope gone. It's those times in your life when we, like Jeremiah, look upon our lives and sigh, disaster overtakes disaster. The whole land is laid waste. I looked upon the earth and lo, it was tohu wabohu and to the heavens and they had no light. But in such moments when the earth shakes, mountains crumble, and chaos is unleashed upon your world, there is a hope we can cling to, a hope that the same God who brought light and life out of the roiling darkness of chaos can also recreate our lives. And so we struggle in the waters of chaos, trying to stay afloat, trying to survive, we struggle in the darkness of sin as it takes its toll on our lives. We struggle in the darkness of ignorance, charting our own course through the waters, through the darkness, refusing to see the light of God's truth. But in the midst of the darkness, there is a light. For ships at sea, the lighthouse was a beacon of hope. It offered protection warning of rocks and shoals that would prove dangerous to seagoing vessels. It offered guidance through the perilous waters, showing the way to the safety of a sheltered port or harbor. This bright light in the darkness often meant the difference between life and death. For that reason, the lighthouse has been a symbol of the light of the world, the divine light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Throughout the Bible, there are these images of light and darkness. 
The opening verses of John's Gospel are reminiscent of Genesis and its story of creation. John puts it this way, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. John loves this image of light. In chapter 3, Jesus says, And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who are evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may clearly be seen that their deeds have been done in God. And in John chapter 8, Jesus again uses this powerful image, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We are called to follow the light as a lamp unto our path. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, said to his disciples, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In the first letter of John, we receive further encouragement to live our lives as followers of the light. He says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says, I am in the light while hating a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. But whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light. The light of the world has come to show us the way, to be a light in our lives and a light unto our path. And we are called to be light, or rather to reflect the light that is within us through Jesus Christ. As we live our lives as faithful disciples, may our light so shine before others so that all might know the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.